So I was asked this question by a parent whose name is Mr. Taylorwood, and he asked the following question, which you'll see on the screen here. And it is, if our job as a parent is to help our players give effort, how would you address a player on the field that is slacking or not giving effort? And listen, you're in pay to play America. Your child might have come to you and said, mom, dad, I want to play ball, whatever sport it is. Let's just assume it's football, so soccer. And they say, I want to play. It's not just recreational. We're not talking about competitive. And you're having that challenge of having to overcome these issues. So I came up with a framework, which is what I'm going to share with you now, of how to handle that situation of your player maybe slacking on the field or not giving 100% effort. And when I'm a parent, the only thing that I'm going to look for is, especially from a young player, this young kid, so let's say like two years old, and two years is not even the correct number. Let's just say probably six to 12 is 100% of their, and this is the key word here, or their maximum effort. If you want greater than that, and what I mean by that is if you have, you're trying to compare your son to, or your daughter to another player, don't do that. I would never do that. You can't compare apples to oranges because they're two different types of players. So we're gonna look at this framework and how to answer this question. And when he, when he posed this to me, I actually responded on Instagram to answer it. Uh, it's a very valid point. Like, how would you handle that? Because as a parent, if your child wants to play, for example, competitive, then they should have a responsibility to give effort. And that should be the only non-negotiable. That's the only one that I would have. So I'm going to show you here how I would handle this non-negotiable thing. So it's basically a, a four-step framework. Right? I'll even put this here for you. So it's framework. So your child now has stepped into wanting to play competitive and we need to make sure that we have this set up. And so when he asked this question, Mr. Taylorwood, it's quite simple. First step, what I would do right here, it says step one, create your non-negotiable. How I would handle that. So if my son came to me and said, dad, I wanna play football. Cool son, let's go out to lunch. We're gonna go out to lunch, we're gonna pick probably his favorite restaurant, whatever, sit down, have a conversation and break this out. And we're gonna create my non-negotiable for him which would be the only thing that I need him to do in order to keep playing that sport. And that would be, for me, effort. The only non-negotiable I will have, son, is that you have effort. And I might, you know, thinking about it now, I might add a second one. You need to have fun. Effort and fun. If you're doing both of those, we're great. And that's, that's the key thing here. So these would be my non-negotiables, right? So I'm going to put this here. And then I'm going to expand on this in a second. So effort and fun would be my only non-negotiables for that age range, Okay. Now, while doing so, we're sitting down at lunch, we're having a conversation. So I would say, okay, Johnny, my non-negotiables for you because you wanna play competitive, right? You wanna play on a competitive team? Yes, dad, I wanna play competitive. Awesome. I'm willing to support you and I wanna help you on your journey because this is your dream, not my dream. And I want, I want you to be involved in this, do what you wanna do, which is fantastic. I'm gonna have two non-negotiables for you. You need to make sure that you're giving 100% effort and 100% fun and that you're having fun. And he might ask, well, what does that mean? What is a non-negotiable? Well, you want something from me. You want me to put you into sport. You want me to invest my time, my effort into you, which is fantastic. And my money, by the way. So three things, time, effort, and money. The only thing that I'm going to need from you is that. Now, obviously, you're going to have other benefits. They're going to be learning. They're going to be growing. They're going to be challenged. They're going to be pushed. They're going to face setbacks. Notice, however, I did not say wins or losses. I just said those things. So I didn't say win or loss or lose. I didn't say those. Okay, so just make sure you, you realize this. I didn't say those in that conversation. I just said those details, okay? So the second point to that though is I will say, hey, I'm gonna have, especially when it comes to effort, not really about fun, but effort, I'm, we're gonna have a three strike policy, three strikes. So for example, your strikes could be strike one, they take a week off. So no training, nothing for a week. Strike two, would say maybe be two weeks off, a month off, whatever you want it to be. It could even be like, for example, strike one could be a day. You miss practice one day. Strike two could be a week. Strike three could be a month. Whatever, you, you set the strikes. So the example I gave was strike one, week off. Strike two, month off. Strike three, we're done for the season. Okay, so you need to determine your strike policy. Understand what it is. So we've created our non-negotiables. We've now got our strike policy. So we finish lunch, we move on, make sure, the, make sure my son understands little Johnny. Yes, dad, I agree. You need to make sure you get the agreeing. I agree to these that I'm gonna give effort and I'm gonna have fun. Now, I will add this as a pre-F, like you need to understand that 
especially with young kids, there's going to be like an open range window here. They might not necessarily know what their, their maximum output is. So it's going to take time. So don't expect this all to happen overnight. But it's the idea is really what we're trying to create. Hey, you need to give effort because you are asking for something. You're trying to put responsibility on them to deliver on this. That's what we're looking to do here. Okay. Now, you're probably thinking, well, how would I determine Kyle if he's giving effort? Cool. That's where this comes into play. Our next step, because we had step one, step one and a half. Now we're at step two. Collect video data. So you might think that when you're at a game or at training, you might say, you, m- you might think that I would say, Johnny, I need you to give more effort. Nope. You need data. This key word here, data. We need data. This is key. You need this. This is how you're going to prove if he's doing it correctly or not, or if she's doing it correctly or not, or how I would do it. So instead of me yelling, screaming, going nuts from the sideline because my child, little Johnny, is not giving effort, I'm going to collect data. I'm going to collect video. So for example, my son decides that he's playing defense one game or a coach puts him at defense and he's walking around the field like this. Guys are running past him, right? I know that's not his maximum effort and he knows that's not his maximum effort. So let's solve that problem by having data Right, This key thing here, data, which would be the video, I can then track that against him. And by against is not the right word, but I can show him later. And I'm not going to get mad, by the way. And I'm going to add on this in a second. But I'm not going to get mad about this. So I'm going to collect data. I'm going to take it and make sure I have a couple of points. Right, So it's not just one video. I'm probably going to need like three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever number. And then I'm going to say, hey, Johnny, I want to take you out to lunch again. And you want to, again, probably take him, and I would take him to his favorite spot. So by me taking him to his favorite spot, he's going to be comfortable. He's going to be happy to be going there. And I'm going to say, hey, I want to show you some video. And this is the key thing. I want you to tell me what you see. So maybe you've already had your burger, your lunch, or whatever. You're sitting down waiting for dessert or something to come out. Or like appetizer lunch type of thing. Then you can show the video. But you need to make sure you say that key thing. I want you to tell me what you see. And you can even expand that. I want you to tell me what you see about your play. You don't get mad. You don't get angry. You're just showcasing. What's going to happen is they're going to watch the video. And they might try and play it off and be like, Oh, I don't know. I thought I was doing something. I thought I was running around or whatever. And you can be like, Okay, what do you really see? And then eventually you're going to get them to hopefully realize that you're going to get to the point of what we're looking for here is that they're going to realize that their mistake was they're not giving effort. So it then be your choice. How do you want to handle this? Do you want to put the strike on them? Or do you want to just have a conversation about it? You got to figure out when you use in step three, when you use the video to show the player the situation. Now, I would not want to sit there and berate my kid for not giving effort. However, I would probably handle it like this. And I would say, Show them the video, they'd come to the terms and they'd understand that they were doing it wrong. And I would say, look, what was our one non-negotiable? And they're going to say, mm, effort. Okay, do you feel like that you're giving me the effort that we agreed to here? And they might try and, you know, tell a white lie and say no. But deep down, they know they're not. Your dad, you're right. I'm not giving the effort that I should have. That's my mistake. And the way that I've handled this before with players is I'll do something along the lines of like, I don't want to explain this to you in the best way possible. So do you want to let your, here it is. Take it this way. I've done this. Ask them their favorite player. Hey, who's your favorite soccer player? They're going to say Messi, Ronaldo, Neymar, Mbappe. If Neymar or Mbappe or Messi or whoever the player is, was watching you play, do you think they would appreciate the amount of effort you're giving? And every time I've asked that question, would your favorite player, Messi, would your favorite player, Ronaldo, would your favorite player, Mbappe, would they appreciate the amount of effort you're giving? And every single time that I've used that, the player has said, no. No, he wouldn't. And sometimes they get a little upset about it because they realize internally, like, Man, I'm letting my favorite player down. So I'll give you a funny example. We had a kid at a tournament. He got hurt, got tackled kind of hard. His ankle was bothering whatever. And so I asked him that question. He was on the bench. He did the warm-up, wasn't really comfortable. Young kid, eight years old, nine years old. 
And I asked him during the game, I was like, hey, do you think you can play? He's like, no, I, I don't think I can play. Okay, I don't think you can play. I got a question for you. Who is your favorite player? He goes, my favorite player is Diego Maradona. So, okay, Diego Maradona, like it, that's awesome. And I said, what if Diego Maradona was watching you play right now or watching your team play right now? Would you, would you not play? And he goes, no, I play. Okay, so why aren't you playing? It's like, well, he's not here. And I said, I promise you, he's watching you play right now. He said, oh, you think so? I know so. Kid got up, got on the field and, and played. He didn't play a long time, but it was that he didn't want to let his hero down. And that's like the key thing here that you need to think about. Whoever the child's hero is, if you get them to think like that, boom, you can unlock potential and you can unlock certain steps to get them to accelerate their development. It's kind of crazy to see how that happens, but deep down, they don't want to let somebody else down. Whoever their hero is, kids don't want to let that person down. So whether that's mom, dad, favorite player, whatever, I've used this a couple of times, probably 50 times. Every time I found success from it, it's never failed at least. The kid might try and play on it, but I've never seen it fail yet. So that's something to, to think about. So using that, when you get to that point, then you got to make a decision. Let's say it's happened three or four times. You're not happy with it. And it's not so much that you're unhappy with them. It's that you're unhappy with the effort that they're giving you. So you can't get mad about it because then we're talking about a thing that I like to talk about or conversate about is two things. We're talking about outcome versus the process, right? Especially with young players, I don't like to talk about the outcome. So I don't like to talk about the outcome. I like to talk about the process, right? So example would be, let's say a defender, simplest thing to use, or one of the simplest ones to use. They're in the back, they're playing, they're getting beat by the guy, and then you feel like they gave it up and they, and they scored. Well, that would be the outcome. You're looking at the wrong piece. You would be looking at the wrong piece here. So if it was me and I'm focusing on the outcome, let's say the guy scored, Looking at the wrong piece. Look at the process. Did the player give enough effort to be successful to stop that person? It's the effort. Okay, and I'll give you a different scenario. There was a game that we had. Kid missed a wide open goal. I mean, wide open. He's like six yards out. Missed the shot completely one touch. Anybody and everybody could have got up to the kid and be like, dude, how did you miss that? Okay, I went up to him and I'm like, thinking about this way, I'm not worried about the outcome. Let's use the red if I can find it. There it is. Let's not worry about the outcome. Let's worry about the process. So probably somebody said, how did you miss that? I can't believe it. From like another player or something. He comes off the field. I come to talk to him. He's, he already knows he missed it, right? Like he knows he made a big, he already knows he made a big, big mistake. I ask him. Do you know why you missed? Process, not outcome. Do you know why you missed? He's thinking about it. He's like, no, I don't really know, coach. I'm like, okay, well, when you went to hit it, so you went to make contact with the ball, you leaned up. You got your foot to go up. That means the ball shot up. If you want the ball to go down when you're trying to hit on a volley, you need to push the ball down. You need to make the contact to push it down. Oh, okay, that makes sense. So I focused on the process of how he made the contact or should have made the contact versus the outcome of missing the goal. So I said, next time, if you want to hit a ball like that, push it down instead of trying to hit and it goes up. Oh, okay. That makes a little bit more sense. I'll try that next time. So I took the worry away about the outcome and we focused on the process. And that there, I think will be game changing for a lot of people because when it comes to this framework, let me go back for a second. So we're looking at the framework here. We create our non-negotiables. We create our three-strike policy. We collect video data. We use the video data when necessary to show the player the situation and then take action if necessary. Okay, now, please remember, when we're looking at this, I'm gonna write it here for you. This is not gonna happen in one week unless your kid is like highly motivated or my son is highly motivated. It's not gonna happen in two weeks. 
What I have found by doing this for a long time, almost 10 years, you're going to see change in players. Okay? I should put X's here. Or I will put X's. You're going to see change from players in usually about three months. It will take roughly that long for the impact and process to really be hit. So that's where you got to be careful as a parent to make those decisions. However, following those steps, and you determine what your non-negotiable is, you can make sure that you put that pressure on them to keep it. And, and you can even do reinforcement things. you got to be careful how you frame them, but you could be in the car driving there, you get to the parking lot, arrive for practice or whatever, a game. Hey, love you, bud. Remember those non-negotiables. Okay, dad, yeah, yeah, love you too, man, thanks. Boom. You put it in his, his mind already. Hey, non-negotiable. What is it? Effort. And you just, I think a lot of times, and I think this goes for almost anybody in any situation, being clear in communication is so important, right? If you let the player, your child know, so if I let my child know, hey, I'm willing to support you. I'm willing to give you what you're asking for, which is to go play football. I'm just asking for effort. Go have fun and have effort and give me effort. That's it. You can win, you can lose, you can tie, whatever. Don't matter. I just want to make sure that you're having fun and you're giving effort. You do those things, I'm happy. I'll continue to support you and your journey and your dream. And when you have that mindset shift, I think that will help tremendously and allow you to really open up those next steps because it, it can be completely game changing. And you just, you need to remember, like this is key, this last part here, really the first one, don't think in the outcome, think in the process. This is why I keep talking about effort. So again, if your, your player's a striker, think about taking the chance, All right? So they took the chance, like they took the shot, All right? Not just did they score, that would be the outcome. So the outcome would be score or did they score? Well, we're not worried about that, especially at a young age. We're worried about did they take the opportunity? Hey, did you take the shot? Did you see the shot you could have took? Yeah, I saw it, I could have taken it. Because most of the time, everybody deals with the outcome. Think process, okay? And then the last piece, please remember, when you wanna see change, this is not gonna happen in one week, one day, two weeks, three weeks, it's gonna happen in three months. Like I remember reading from Pep when he first took over, I think it was Man City. And they're like, hey, how long do you think it's going to take for the players to really start buying into your process? Because the first season, he finished third, by the way. He's like, when he first came in, one of his first interviews, it's going to take about three months for the team to really adapt to what I'm looking for. He said, for professional players, it will take three months for them to adapt to what he's looking for from the team. Well, Lord, if that's going to take a professional that long, maybe this will take longer. Six months, nine months, 12 months. But the key thing here, three months, especially if you've given them the flexibility to kind of do their own thing early. If they've had a lot of structure in their life in the sense of like responsibility, details, you can probably get it faster. But if they've had a lot more freedom in their life in terms of like, again, not having responsibility, not having that type of pressure, it's going to take longer. It just depends. So hopefully that makes sense, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. But, oh, the last thing I want to add, I don't want to forget about this. This is so, so important for me. This is how I would behave on this. And I wanna make sure I emphasize this. So let me do that for you. Let's say you are watching your child play game and you think he's not giving effort. So you think no effort or very low effort. Should I say something during the game in terms of like getting mad or yelling? Nope. I am just going to collect data. I want to make sure I have my data so that way I can come back to little Johnny, my son, and be like, hey, we talked about this. The effort piece, not the no effort, but the effort piece. And I have my data points that I can then show. Hope that makes sense, guys. Truly appreciate you. If you found value from this video, please make sure you smash that subscribe button and we will see you in the next video.